So now that you programmed the position tracking, I'll ask you for three more modifications. So first of all, as you remember, we had some colored cardboard on top of our laser scanner. And this laser scanner was then tracked by our video tracker. And you probably remember this red circle, which tried to follow the laser scanner in the real world. So as you can see, there is more than one coordinate system involved. So we try to track this point here, whereas the robot turns around a point that is somewhere here. So there's a difference between the robot coordinate system and the track coordinate system. And this is often the case. So you often have for every sensor, you do have a coordinate system. And for the robot as such, you would have another coordinate system, which often is termed the body coordinate system, whereas this is the lighter coordinate system. So we have a displacement. And the first thing I'll ask you is to integrate this displacement. In this case, it means you should output the point of the LiDAR, whereas for your motion equations, the coordinate system of the robot is important. So what you can see here, it's really easy to do so, because if the robot has this heading, then you just have to subtract this displacement here. And then after you did your forward motion equations, you have to add up again this displacement vector, which then points to another direction in, in the direction of the new heading. I assumed that the robot's coordinate system is somewhere here. And I took a ruler and measured this. And I think it's something like 30 millimeters. Now the second modification I want is a different starting point. So if you remember the video from the beginning, that was our arena. And the robot went from the bottom left. Now, unfortunately, that video was turned by 180 degrees. So in reality, in our coordinate system, the robot starts here and goes down here and then does those circles. And the third modification I want you to do is a output to file. So instead of directly printing to the console and making this figure using matplotlib, I want you to output all positions into an ASCII file. You'll have to write this second implementation for the tracking of the robot. And you have to add the scanner displacement, the different start pose, and the output of the result to a file. And so as you see, you still have the same function as you did in your last implementation. It's only the case that you have to integrate into this function now the scanner displacement. And that's all. The scanner displacement is defined down here in the main function. Otherwise, the ticks and the robot width are still the same. And there's a new start pose which I defined here with the new XY and a new heading. As you can see here, I opened this motors file. I do the filtering just as in the last solution. And at the end, here's the output to a file instead of the plot. So I open a file and for every pose that is generated here, I just output an F, which is the code that we use for filtered position. And then the X, Y and heading and this x, y, and heading, this is exactly the three values that you should produce for every pose. So and after you run this code, it will produce a text file, which is called poses from ticks, meaning you computed all the poses of the robot using just the tick counts from the motors. And this file will have 278 lines. And you should check that you produce that number of lines. And it begins as follows. So here is the F. It always is an F for filtered position. And these are the values that are set in the program as the start pose. And as we had that before, you have first these 13 positions where the robot stayed in the same place. And then it starts to move. And so you should verify that your program gives you exactly the same numbers. And let's have a look at the end of the file. So at the end of the file, the position should be 329. 543 and the heading should be 4.78 and you should verify that you get the same result. And there's something really cool in the set of files that you downloaded. So after you produced this file with all the positions, you can use this log file viewer.py to have a look at it. So locate the file in the set of files you downloaded for this unit and then start it either from the console or via idle or just by double clicking on it in the Explorer. So after you start the log file viewer, it will open up a file selector like that. And you can switch to text files in order to only 
view this type of files. And then select the poses from ticks, that is the file that we just produced. And after you open that, you can see the trajectory, all the points that you just produced. And you can now travel along this trajectory with your virtual robot starting at position 0 and going to position 277. So this is the 278 positions that we have here. And you can see the position as well as the heading at that point where the heading is shown as a line pointing in the direction of the robot. You can also see the numerical values that you produced, meaning the X, Y and the heading. And if you want, you can load additional files. For example, the motor information that you use to compute this trajectory, that's the robot motors file. Well, in that case, that can't be visualized. So you'll see the motor values down here, whereas it doesn't change the display of the trajectory here. 